crunchy, crispy. Carnivore Girls Creative Carnivore Kitchen. No plants, no dairy. The next level cooking show. Carnivore recipes with meat, fish, seafood, eggs, gelatin, flavored seltzer, water, and salt. From super easy to complicated. From quickly done to many hours in the kitchen. I always say everybody's body and brain are different and you got to figure out what works best for you. The carnivore lifestyle has tremendous benefits, healing effects and is the best elimination diet. There are many different ways how to do carnivore. I found a way that momentarily works the best for me. In this cooking show, I'll show you it doesn't have to be boring and can be very creative, delicious and fun. I already created so many carnivore recipes on Instagram, at Carnivore Girl. And I have this never-ending list on my phone with tons of ideas. My brain is a gift and a curse. Have fun with this episode! Another carnivore ingredients and methods episode. Bacon! I love bacon. I don't eat bacon. I don't eat pork because pigs, they just eat everything. They're not ruminants, so they can't um, get all the plant toxins out and their meat is just not very clean except if they would eat just duck wheat or um, like really really good food like uh, no grains and and pigs just eat everything everything you throw at them and i don't trust the sources here where i would get pork so i don't eat pork so except for prosciutto i have to admit why i don't know why just because but i don't eat bacon and most bacon not all of the bacon there is really good bacon out there but most bacon they are cured they have nitrates in it they even have sugar in it or honey in it or whatever read on the label if you buy bacon buy it as clean as possible. There is really clean bacon. But so I just started making bacon. And yes, I know, it's actually beef bacon, but I like bacon better. So I have here a whole brisket that I started cutting in pieces and I try to figure out, I want to find a piece that I can freeze and then make the bacon out of it. And yeah, this is not very good for bacon. I'm also going to use it for charring. So this is perfect for charring, like all the stuff that is actually really chewy and not really um, uh, easy to eat. Uh, when you char it, then it gets super soft and delicious. So then here, I think I'm gonna cut this off. This is also, you know, for this is like good for bacon, right? Because I want like stripes. So this is a bit too much. Maybe I'm gonna just cut this off or cut that off. That's also good for charring because uh, the fattier it is, the meat for charring, the better lean meat for charring sucks. This is a bit really thin for bacon ah, okay i'm trying to figure that out right now and yeah this here is also the tough stuff for sure i'm gonna cut this off and use up for charring okay so i've made bacon before but not from a whole brisket so i tried to figure out so um this piece uh, I cut this piece. This looks kind of cool because, you know, uh, bacon instead of bacon. So I kind of want to want these um, stripes, strips, right? So I think this is good 
here it doesn't look that nice but so uh, i think i'm gonna freeze this here's just stuff i uh cut off but this is gonna go into jarring for sure because that's like the most delicious stuff for jarring and um so this here i i i didn't cut this off i cut this one a little bit off here but i think i'm just gonna freeze this and then see how that goes for bacon this is very lean very thin but that one is uh well yeah like this way why not it's a bit lean it's not really ba bacon like but i think i'm gonna keep that too so i'm defrosting this piece of brisket i already cut a little bit off and um it's still very frozen so now i can uh cut thin slices oh nice bacon slice look at this now what i usually do is now cut one from that side ah shit my uh ring light uh, is dying i'm sorry so and when i feel huh now it's too frozen I just wait and then I come back and cut later and here I uh, saved these dividers from prosciutto awesome they're perfect right now Then I'm just gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. Trying to get as much air out as possible. Now put the date on it and it goes back into the freezer or in the fridge depends how uh, fast you want to eat them I am so sad I had the great idea to put the bacon in this special bag and here I could vacuum seal it how great right with this saw and like this but unfortunately, I tried it so many times, Paul tried it, it seems like it's broken. It seems like I've never used it before, so I don't think it ever worked. I'm so sad. If you can store the bacon like this, that would be perfect. That would be so cool. So then here, I already have some that I cut and froze. So see, then I put it in a Ziploc bag like this. then I should be able to, oh yeah, you see, get them, ooh, get them off because of the separators. Nice. And here, <laughs> this is also brisket, but uh, apparently much leaner brisket. And I feel like this is Canadian bacon. Bacon. Here. American bacon, Canadian bacon. <laughs> oh, bacon! Frying pan. Ooh, it's already really heated up. 
a coon still frozen i think this is a bit oh uh, here it's thicker here it's thinner <laughs> Bacon has enough fat. I don't need to put in any fat here. I'm gonna turn that down a bit. So I heated it up on the highest. Now I'm going very, very low. Ninja Furi is preheated, still frozen, the bacon. This is a little bit, it's not a thick one, but a little bit thicker. This is like really thin. So I might have to take that one out earlier. That one is also a bit thicker. And what should we do? Broil, of course. Uh, I'm just gonna check after four minutes. Of course, it depends how much well crispy you want it done almost forgot my bacon doesn't have salt so i want to put the salt on it of course before because if you make it very crispy then the salt is not gonna stick on it but you don't need to use salt i like it salty Ooh, four minutes i think that's good Ah, nice. Crunchy, crispy. Yes, I'm here in the bathroom because I want to torch and if I torch in the kitchen, the fire alarm will go off. So I took out bacon from the freezer. So it's still frozen. Adding some salt, lots of salt, and torch it with propane. <laughs> also the other side. dry bacon or tea room temperature i do that a lot of times with a lot of stuff uh, you see here this is like my drying rack here um this is already uh, i think 13 days or something this is also really fresh and i want to use some durango hickory smoked sea salt so this is really, really strong, smoky, um, delicious, but very strong. So I'm just gonna use really just a little bit, a tiny bit, also then on the other side, but then I wanna use Himalayan pink salt for the rest. I live in Reno Narada. It's usually very dry here. Um, humidity is very very low so I don't get problems with RT room temperature drying so maybe where you live it's too humid then you would have to do it in the fridge it just takes longer but you can just put it in the fridge or start it in the fridge and then take it out when it's already kind of dry and then put it at room temperature so both sides and these are pretty thin as you can see but usually i um twice a day usually i flip them over usually in the morning and in the evening ones so and i just leave them for days how yeah however long i want to Ooh, look at my RT bacon beautiful so I just turned it over once in a while and left it out here at room temperature to dry out so I have these two beautiful ones 
I think I'm, I'm going to eat just one like that and the other one I'm going to put in the frying pan. Let's eat that one here. I don't think it's really possible to eat. I do RT drying all the time with everything and it's always super delicious, but this? Okay, RT drying bacon doesn't really work unless I just wanna Hey, I actually love that. I can use that for like in front of the TV or so, just when I wanna chew on something. Yeah, but, oh man. Ah, oh, actually now, yeah. I was actually missing that because I love to eat and sometimes I just wanna eat more, but I don't wanna eat too much, so this takes a while for me to eat so i can just chew and chew oh wow i actually really like that let's get some of the fat oh i can get this here oh hell yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love this finally i found something that takes me a while to eat. So I'm um, I'm occupied for a while with chewing. Awesome for me. You may not believe me, but I love eating it so much. Keep it eating it from every side. Really, it's like so good like this, but I still want to put some on the pan. Oh, look at this. Okay, I hope I let them cool off enough. Ooh, so pretty warm. Wow, that one tastes so like bacon. Now it's much easier to eat. So yeah, it's cool, but I like it much better. Not fried in a pan when it's just dried out. It gets like hard to chew on. I really, really like that actually. Super cool. <laughs> Thanks for watching! If you try out this recipe, please tag me and let me know how you like it. Subscribe, share, like, comment, follow me on Instagram, at Carnivore Girl. See you next week in my next episode of Carnivore Girl's Creative Carnivore Kitchen. No plants, no dairy, the next level cooking show.